another beautiful episode. Yes. I cannot wait. Episode 138, by the way. Yes. And of course, you have your girl, Britt. And of course, can't do this without the OG, triple OG, <laughs> Brandi Gates, not your average agent. And we have with us a phenomenal woman who yes. is doing big things out here. Yes. She is the founder of the Urban EDU, and she's going to just tell us about the educational background and how she's helping to give back, um, giving a lot of knowledge, tips, advice, lot of profound information that all of us need to hear. Absolutely. Welcome, Ms. Jasmine. Thank you so much. Thank you yes. both for having me. Thank I'm you. excited. So excited to just be here with you all and just be in community. Yes, yes. No. definitely. No, definitely. Thank, you. thank you. We appreciate you coming on tonight. Yeah. So let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the Born and raised in Cleveland? I am not. Okay. Am I allowed to be here? Oh, no, no, no. You know what? You know what? Your honor, your honor, 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 honor,
to be another way. <laughs> like, yeah. there has to be right. another way. And there's too many black kids who don't like school because of little instances like that. And mm. so I was thinking, like, yeah, if this is what we're identifying as top notch, mm. we have to have some more conversations. And so mm. that, and just, you know, obviously a couple different scenarios, but th that was like the pivotal moment of my career of like, wow, there is something wrong here that we're ignoring, and I can't be a part of that. Mm. And, and let me ask you this, because, um, and excuse me, because my view is kind of skewed. I watched Abbott Elementary. Yes. <laughs> I love Abbott Elementary. <laughs> but but yes. one of the things that, that, that they, I love it because, you know, it's funny. I feel like it's a insight to how inner city schools lack funding, lack yes. certain necessities to, you know what I'm saying, just give a yes. proper education to, to students or whatnot. The biggest thing inner city schools lack is opportunity and experience. Mm. Like, if you go to these private schools like Hawking, um, mm -hmm. they have a lot of experiences for their kids. Lots of clubs, lots of field trips, lots mm -hmm. of, lot. these schools, some of these schools, they go to school and they leave. Mm -hmm. And that's it. There aren't any clubs, there aren't, besides basketball, football, cheerleading, the clubs are limited. And so, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like they're being robbed, you know, like, Clubs are where you learn what you like to do, That's and if we're fact. never giving a child an opportunity to experience, and then we're wondering why they don't become, mm -hmm. you know, more, it's like, mm -hmm. we missed a step, yeah. you know, and my business wants to make sure that we're not missing steps. We have to do a better job at educating all of our children, but especially those in inner city. Mm -hmm. So let's, break that. Let's, let's talk about this business. Let's talk about how your business is changing the educational system for uh, for, for, no, no, I said for, for, the, for the community, for the world. Absolutely. So um, the purpose behind the Urban EDU is to work um, with students in underserved communities, mm -hmm. um, specifically students that are learning in high impoverished areas. Um, and there are kind of like three pillars to the business. So one, we just raise awareness around trauma and poverty and what mm -hmm. that does to the brain. Um, there are mm -hmm. a lot of students that are learning in poverty, but they're not, their issues, the root isn't being addressed. And so they look at the kids like they're lazy or they're not, mm. you know, doing their homework or they just don't care when there are a lot of layers to watch a child cannot be successful. So wow. one, like I said, raising awareness around trauma and poverty. Um, two, just increasing just the instructional capacities of teachers. Um, we look at the kids a lot, but I want us to look at these teachers sometimes. Mm. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> they have the best intention, but not the best results or the best means of going about that. So um, I want to support teachers on delivering high quality instruction to students in the inner city. Um, and then lastly, just ensuring that black students are being treated with respect. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of universities, they teach a lot of classroom management and control and, um, but you know, children these days, they don't respond that way. Like they're not just respecting you because you're the adult. Like it's, so it's, it's these kids are different yeah. and we have to approach it differently. Yeah. Um, and so again, just, just making sure that we're having the right conversations. I think mm -hmm. education is one of the fields that really hasn't, haven't been like innovated. Mm -hmm. Like we're still doing the exact same as we were doing when we were in school, when our mm -hmm. parents were in school. And it's like, when are we going to try something a little bit different? So just bringing some innovation and experience to inner city classrooms, serving students who are experiencing trauma or in poverty. Yeah. No. Uh, let's pick up on time. Uh, we want to why I said it because I love how you said we're not addressing the underlying issues because mm -hmm. if I'm hungry because of nothing eating at home, then the course is going to affect my, exactly. my, my learning. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. If I, I mean, and I have in East Cleveland the story, I mean, the stories of what these children yeah. are carrying when they come in, mm. and you're asking them to take their hoodie off, give them a moment. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, wow. we have to remind ourselves that before they're your student, they're like human beings. Man, and I ooh. think that um, the classroom has lost a lot of respect for the child, it's so mm. much as respecting the teacher. And just again, and of course, the teacher deserves respect. I don't ever want, you know, that to get misconstrued, but mm -hmm. I think that both are really really important and when we look at a child being disrespectful we rarely look at what triggered it mm -hmm. and, um i think both of those <laughs> need mm -hmm. to be discussed you know no, sure. question is, so what is there different how can i say this what, what, what's your business like because i know what the so high school middle school elementary are all different Right. Uh, um, Entities. Yeah. Right, 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 yes, right, right, yes. right. So the Urban EDU focus on K through 8th grade. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. K okay. through 8th grade. High school is 
a little different. Um, <laughs> Lord bless them, right? Um, but we kind of want to get to them before getting mm. a little bit early okay. um, yeah. to see how we can kind of influence them before they've already been had so many different experiences. We kind of mm. want to like address it early. Um, because if I can get a child to fall in love with school in the third grade, it's different than trying to save a, a senior. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like if we can correct it early, why not just get a better, you know, like foundation for the okay. for the children? Mm -hmm. oh, so awesome. we do different things. Like I go to different schools. I put on professional developments, um, workshops where um, you know I work with the staff there, just educating them on whatever the topic may be. Um, I also do like one-to-one -one direct instructional coaching where, um, and that's what I'm doing currently. Mm -hmm. So I currently am a dean um, at Apex Academy in East Cleveland. Shout out to okay. Apex. Shout out to cool. DC. Um, shout out. Mm -hmm. And um, I serve the students there, third through fifth grade. Um, and again, I instructionally coach those teachers there and just bring innovation and just joy back to the classroom. I think mm -hmm. it's the, the school is a beautiful place that so many people don't connect with and I feel yeah. like we have to fix that yeah we have to fix that there's too many black kids who don't like school and I feel like that it's your right to love school like yeah. we work for them so just mm -hmm. trying to change the narrative around black students and education is what okay. I'm trying to do you know and I, I think that's awesome because I think not enough uh, is centered around that yeah you know yeah. the fact that your business is actually is a, a not so not only a need but services up uh, I feel like a, a depleted area of education I think mm -hmm. it's an awesome thing so, yeah it's like for you. years you know for years black students have underperformed with mm -hmm. their peers and it's like why are we just allowing that to be or you know the amount of schools in urban settings that don't have gifted programs like you mean tell me it's not one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's true like you know so it's just we just, so just doing better but also just having the courage to start a business that will allow better to come yeah. um, I think you know, it's just, just trying to keep moving forward and figure out how I can help and what my part in helping is. Mm -hmm. So mention this, and, and uh, I want to ask opinion because I feel like there's a special disposition someone needs to have to work with, with, with children in schools. What do you think the quality of the person needs to have to even, if they want to embark in, in what you do and uh, what disposition, or how to say how to write spirit? Because <laughs> yeah. I feel like not everyone's yeah. being a teacher. Right, <laughs> no, very true, very true. <laughs> um, I think a lot of it is like, like you said, like. You have to want to do this work. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just a job that you kind of pick up because it, it's going to frustrate and overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that um, to be a successful educator, you have to be a good listener. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have patience and you have to be very compassionate. Um, mm -hmm. Kids are not just these eight-year-old little beings walking in who just had a great night and breakfast in the morning and like <laughs> they come with they come with baggage and yeah. so having the compassion that you know it may not be they may not want to learn today and, and not taking that personal so like mm. I said just being a good listener being compassionate um, and having the drive to want to be there because yeah. working in the inner city not not for the week. <laughs> it's not it's not for the week. That's for sure. That's for sure. No, I'm about to say because like I, at my church I try to help on the kids ministry. I did it for one time. <laughs> and I lazy to myself, like I don't God did not bless me with this spirit. <laughs> And like I love my kids, I, I God grace me for my children. Yes, you know? yes, but, yes. But it's other teachers, so, so, oh, it's different. So shout out to you teachers. You yes, know, so God bless y'all. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think um, those COVID really had to teach us that. Uh, woo. Oh yeah, you would never lie. Yes. Yes. Listen, when they when we sent them home, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of parents like, baby, please yes. open mm. that building back yes. up. But like you yes. said, no, it's. It's real, um, but I'm honored to do it. Like I, interestingly, I thought that I would just be not just be that sounds bad, but I thought that I would be a principal. Like that would be mm -hmm. my path. I would retire a principal. Mm -hmm. um, but just really realizing that even, even from the seat of a principal, there are still limitations in your influence because you still have mm -hmm. to respond to, you know, the the law. <laughs> like you yeah. know what I mean. Like there's still a box that you're in that you mm -hmm. kind of have to lead from, and so. Me starting my own business is allowing me to do things what I feel is right as opposed to what we've always done in education. Hold on, you say that. Because, I mean, I, and, and I, I, this I do know at least that quotas have to be met, you know? Yeah, right. Certain, certain right. markers and metrics have to be met. You right. Know? But I love how you just said that because you have your own business, you don't have to adhere to those things. Mm -mm. 
No. You, you got here to a whole different metric set that exactly. you set yourself. So I think that's that's an awesome thing. I think the lesson now I'm guessing what you do, but invents it all together. You know? Exactly. So that's awesome. Right exactly. There. If you don't if you don't fit into that box, like stop forcing it. I think sometimes too people can get really down on themselves or feel like the walk of that's over their life is not really for them because they don't fit the narrative. But we don't always have to fit the narrative to get the job done. And mm. I just feel like if it's put on you, um, you know, I'm not the traditional assistant principal by any means. And I used to be a little bit unsure of that, but now I'm proud of that. I'm not a traditional, you know, mm. the box that they would put an assistant mm. principal in because people need to see different people doing different things. And so, yeah. you know, Tied I would say, yeah, if you, you know, if you, if you have the push, Go for it, like yeah. you know, go for it. No, and I, that's that's I, that's an awesome thing right there. So let me ask you this: mm -hmm. um, pandemic hits. Mm -hmm. Did that change your business as a whole, or did it help cultivate it more during the pandemic? Were you able to? Yeah. Oh, my bad, my yeah. bad. And I was still thinking this. I was still coaching. Like, how did you? Because so you said, I'm like, I'm like, how did coach it? Yeah. So thank you. Really, I mean, COVID was a blessing um, mm. because COVID showed us that there's a lot of different ways that we can collaborate and connect without us yeah. being in the same city. Wow. Um, so for me personally, COVID was it, it, it blessed my business. One, it sat me down to really pour into it. Um, but two, it was when I joined something called Black Girls Teach. Shout out to Black Girls Teach. Okay, that's so um, dope. And it is a, um, it's, it's, uh, people all over the nation um, is a part of this program. Um, Deidre Fogarty created it. Mm -hmm. um, and I joined Black Girls Teach at, right during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and so just being around a lot of like-minded educators, a lot of mm -hmm. entrepreneurs that was, you know, no excuse getting to it, yeah. um, just really helped me. But in particular to the pandemic, because everything was virtual and online, I was able to start doing a lot of virtual sessions. And so I started connecting with people in Georgia and California, um, someone in Africa, like, you know, just, just it opened, you know, the horizon. So um, it slowed us down a little bit, but it showed us where innovation can happen with a setback. Um, and I just, yeah, I took what I had and just did what I could. So the pandemic actually, Helped. Well, there we go. Yeah. There we go. It was a blessing in disguise. Oh, right. Yeah, it was. I like it. It was. I don't want to say shout out to the pandemic, but I don't know. I don't know what to say. Too far. Right, right, right. right, right, right. right. I don't know what to say. It's canceled today. Another day, not today. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> well, I got a question for you. So let me, let's me let talk about year one or when you first started out. Mm -hmm. How did you go about uh, t talking to. Uh, let's, 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 let's talk about that. How did you go about telling places about or schools about your business like how did you go about that how did you reach out to them like hey so, i got something for you so the first step was getting a mentor mm, um, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> yes like if your coach doesn't have a coach you need a new coach like get Time so. a mentor <laughs> like you know it's 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 too many people who've done it before and not that you have to do it the exact same way but there's a lot of lessons that you don't have to relearn when yeah. you have a mentor so uh. first step was really getting a mentor to really show me the way um, I really value professional development, so there's not a book I won't buy or a mm. session I won't pay for. Um, and so, again, I got a mentor, and then I joined a cohort that was um, supporting, we call them edupreneurs, like edupreneurs is what it's called. I'm sorry, our coach's not here. She, her name is Marquita. She probably knows what you mean by cohort, so you got to break it down. Oh, so a cohort <laughs> um, is a group of um, inspiring, aspiring okay. entrepreneurs um, that is being coached by someone who has a business that is rooted in, like, educational services. Awesome. So um, all of... The, all of our group wanted to be educational consultants, mm. and so we kind of came together. So like I said, got the mentor, joined the educational consulting cohort, um, where they she taught me how to write a proposal, how mm. to how to just you know put yourself out there. Um, and so I started off by using a lot of word of mouth, people that I knew, people that yeah. I've worked with before. Um, Instagram became like a pivotal part of my business is mm -hmm. posting sharing um you know if i'm throwing an event i'm putting that on instagram i'm sliding in people's dms hey i got this coming up let What's me know up? if you can make it let me know what you're looking for mm -hmm. um and then again just just sending it out and you know a hundred i might have sent a hundred out and might have only gotten five responses but if the five responses came with a check mm -hmm. so i'm gonna take those five responses there we go you know, right. so, yeah. 
Slide my DMs, y'all. Not in that way. Yes, yes. Yes, that's not purpose. Tight episode. We got eight titles now. Cool. Right. I was like, yeah. Now, don't be afraid to just put yourself out there. Like, Absolutely. The worst thing they can say is not right now. Mm. Um, and then you just circle back up when right now is right, you know? Mm. Um, but just also to allow myself to go at my own pace because I will say um, for me specifically, I do still serve in a school. Yeah. So I do still have a nine to five, you know, that takes mm -hmm. a lot of my energy and time, but um, being really strategic and disciplined, if, if this is what I want, find the time to make it happen. That's and nice. so a little bit of discipline and a little bit of kind of putting yourself out there mm -hmm. on faith and here we are. You know, mm -hmm. that's awesome right there. And, yeah. uh, I love once again you seen the need and you, you said I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel it so mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a lesson to all y'all like you don't have to be an education per se but just understanding the principle of um, seeing the need and having a passion for it yeah or yeah. not or like with this line of so maybe, maybe <laughs> not have a passion for it, it pays the bill but no uh, seeing the need and feeling it so no. yeah even if too like I think some people may be nervous or unsure about propelling a business forward because it's being done a lot you know there are a lot of educational consultants that are putting on professional developments and mm -hmm. going to school but it's like i had to find my zone of genius and like yeah. what do i really care about and what do i act what what am i good at and so yeah. i kind of marry those two of like i really care about inner city education i really care about black youth um and i'm really good at teaching so how can i kind of put this together mm -hmm. and, and make an impact and yeah Obviously, a whole lot of God, <laughs> but um, just yeah. following what was put on me to act it out. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I got a question for you. So, mm -hmm. how do you balance out motherhood, your business, being a wife? How do you balance out <laughs> all that? Oh, Woo. <laughs> yeah. Woo. yeah, no, it's, um, it's a lot. And I think um, really accepting that there's no real balance. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, thank you. I, I, I called you. I, I see you. So far away, that I can't point to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no real balance. You know, it, it's not going to ever look how you put in your planner. Yeah. Um, and really being okay with that, but also knowing, like, okay, I need to dedicate time. So I am someone who, like, I'm a lister, I'm a checker, mm. I'm a, you know. Um, and so if I want to dedicate 30 minutes, I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes mm. and use that 30 minutes to focus on that. If I want to read for 30 minutes, I have a timer that is showing me how, how long I've gotten into it. You know, just yeah. finding ways to be more disciplined and strategic with how I'm using my time, but also accepting the fact that, like, sometimes one bucket is going to get a little bit bored than the other, mm. and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but um, being really honest with my needs, I think with my husband, like my life partner, of course, I have mm. to be able to say, hey, I need you to take over tonight. Like, mm -hmm. I have to dedicate this. So having the right people around you. That's yeah. Um, and yeah, and also too, just like knowing when to rest. I I'm think. <laughs> I caught it. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know it's, what? Not, it's like you're writing a point. You're yeah. Like, yeah. It's so, just, uh, yeah, we can sit now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, knowing when to pause, you know, um, knowing, knowing when to rest and a big thing that I'm still working on, like I'm nowhere have I mastered it, but not trying so hard to be so perfect and to have mm -hmm. everything so you know a lot of people are like oh i can't launch until i have this or i'm not going to launch my business until i got my website or i'm not gonna it doesn't have to be perfect mm -hmm. just get yourself out there That's just good. take that step forward and you know your your community doesn't need perfect they need your presence and so mm -hmm. just i'm sorry Tell yeah. so <laughs> you like, hey, real. <laughs> that's real talking that's real <laughs> You don't need to be perfect. No, that's good. No, no, but so yeah, just accepting that balance isn't what we think. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Again, just being honest with the way you're using your time um, is important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. That's good stuff right there. Because mm -hmm. I, I think too many of us entrepreneurs, we feel like we feel like a failure if, let's say, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I want to be more of a father or mother in this in this as in this time of my life. But mm -hmm. then my business is kind of slowing down, yeah. or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Right. I understand like you said, I love how you said there's no balance. Yeah, you know? yeah. No. And I would say also like invest in systems. I think mm. that um here when you're starting a business and it's a lot of like passion work, you don't realize the additional hands that are kind of going with like running a business and kind of keeping the show on the road. So um, you know, and invest in systems. Like if mm. if, if email marketing isn't your thing, go find somebody who's it's their thing yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. don't be afraid to go out for support when you're getting started um, you don't have to be bringing in a million dollars to have people supporting your 
your fl- in your functioning business mm. to you know no yeah trying to do everything by yourself is another thing that kind of i think have people like oh my gosh how how do i do it all well you shouldn't really be doing it all mm. so then let's take a step back right. <laughs> you know yeah mm-hmm. i love how you said systems and mentorship i feel like the two mm-hmm. biggest mm-hmm. cheat codes if you want to excel or get far in your business those yes. two things because the mentors are going you're not about to go through certain hurdles because they already been through them. Yeah. Right. But the system's going to help you in those moments where you can't give it all because the systems are, are in your place. Exactly. When that passion and that drive isn't propelling you mm-hmm. and you're tired, the system is going to keep your business mm-hmm. going. All right. That's so good. you have to have that in place. And, and of course, it's a work in mm-hmm. progress. I never want to act like I have everything figured out by any means. I'm learning every day, and I, yeah. I am a proud, lifelong learner for sure. But just knowing that there are ways to make things easier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, um, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to say, hey, hi. Can't sell your home and tired of carrying that load? Drop the house. Gutter Properties will buy your house as is with offers up to $300,000. Need serious repairs, liens, taxes, or judgments? We'll work through your unique situation to get that house off your back. During your free, no obligation appraisal, we maintain social distancing and take every precaution to ensure your experience is safe. Drop the house. Gutter Properties. Call us or visit gutterproperties.com today. I will I will quickly say, hey, how did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Girl, Katina, where did you get that? You know, I will, yeah. I will, how, how did you, because I will never, I'm I'm always going to clap. There's room for everybody. And yeah, that's another yeah. thing I've learned, too. It's a lot of avenues, and it's a lot of routes people can take. So mm-hmm. we don't have to be in so much competition. It's room. Mm-hmm. It's room. You know, before it's all there, yeah, that's good. Sure. That's good. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this: um, Is there? I know you're EC right now. Yep. And I'm pretty sure there are other uh, schools that you can branch out. Like, is there? Not saying I don't know. Do we call it franchising with, 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 with that? Would you say where you can work? Oh, contract work. I'm sorry. There we go. I'm sorry. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So that's <laughs> next. Um, that's next. God willing, uh, this will be my last year. Um, in a school, I will always serve yeah. um, in East Cleveland forever, um, for as long as I can. I'll say that for mm-hmm. as long as I can, I'll do my do what I can. But um, my goal is to contract this program out to where I work with schools in the inner city, yeah. um, and depending on what they need. So if they need mm-hmm. more behavioral support, then I will kind of give them, you know, professional development in that mm-hmm. regard. If they have a lot of new teachers, um, I know y'all heard about like the teacher shortage and how yeah. there's not teachers are leaving. Yeah. And yeah. so there, we ha- what are we going to do about that? Mm-hmm. So just depending on what the school needs, I'll have a few different paths for them. But yes, um, the next stages for the urban EDU is to go full time contracting with schools and districts and just delivering what I know and helping where I can yeah. while still being connected to East Cleveland. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So I got to talk my head, like growing up in Cleveland public schools, uh, it's a couple mm-hmm. of schools that need some help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Men in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You're probably right then and now, right? Right. right. So, no. Yeah. Like you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> you'll be surprised how many schools, how many students aren't being taught science. Mm. Something that's just such a basic, you think that everybody learns reading, math, right? <laughs> and it's when you think about the amount of children who may literally love science, that it's not a focus because they feel like teaching science is pointless because the child can't read. I mean, there is like there are wow. layers, mm-hmm. and I would encourage you. Obviously, you know, like of course this is for entrepreneurs, but if you are a parent, please, please be involved in your child's education because you cannot assume that these schools have your child's best interest yeah. you just can't assume that like mm-hmm. and there's too many stories that prove that they don't always you mm-hmm. know so ask the right question did you feel respected today um the, wow. if, you know like ask them that um wow. you know how did you respond when you felt disrespected like have those type of conversations wow. because um there's a lot going on in schools that I don't think the community is aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another thing that I want to do in part of this business is like raise awareness to the fact that like you two didn't even know that there are some schools that aren't teaching children science. Oh, I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. That is crazy. It's crazy. The service. When you think about the lack of black doctors, black scientists. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Well, they didn't get science in the fifth grade. So. Right. Because that's, 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 that's where it starts. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. You know? wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just a lot of interesting things going on, but you'll never hear that in a predominantly white school. They mm. wouldn't dare take science away because they know that they will have a line of people up. But and it's wow. not that our community doesn't care; it's that our community doesn't, doesn't know. No, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Because, man, when it's that baking soda that vinegar, man, when we seen that right. potato, I'm right. like, man, this yeah. is where it's at. Yes. Yeah. It makes you have to research and think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It does. It does. It does. Yeah. And just asking your child is more than, like, how was your day? Like, no, get go in with yeah. them. Do you feel like you're learning? Do you feel like your teacher likes you? Mm. Do you have somebody to go to if you're sad during the day? Like, real things that, you know, children spend a lot of time at school. So imagine all mm. that time that's, it could be liberating or it could be damaging. And it's too wow. many black kids that fall in the damaging bucket that we have to have more of this to where, you know, regardless of what your walk of life is, like, we have to know how our children are being educated. Yeah. Um, Cause we all play a part, you know, yeah. whether we're parents or educators or both, <laughs> you know, mm. we play a part. You, it's a whole paradigm shift. Now I ask my kid, we feel the trick today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cause like, I didn't think I need to ask her, but that, I think the fact you, now it's in my head, like to be able to ask my kid, Hey, how was school today? First, but then get a little deeper into mm -hmm. it all. Like if you yeah. feel respected, you feel. Yeah. Did anything happen today that I should know of? Yeah, that's well, good. Like, were you embarrassed today? What happened? Mm -hmm. Like, tell me more. Like, you know, just talk to children. Like, so many children aren't being talked to. They're being talked at. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. go do this, or you all right, go lay down. Or, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's quick directions. It's rarely, like, rich conversations. And kids mm -hmm. will tell you. The mm -hmm. first thing I do, like, if I have a student who, let's say they got in trouble and they come to my office for a behavior issue, I want to know from them first, what happened? I'm not, I'm not going to immediately go with the adult because I want to hear their perspective. So mm. I think we have to we have to find value in a, in a child's voice. And we have to we start by asking the right questions. I feel like, so I, I, so I work in retail, right? Or I work, well, I work in retail. But I feel like that's this conversation we have with customers. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the student is the customer in this aspect. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And I have to remind educators of that. Like, mm. technically, we work for them. Like wow. so, in the same way that um, in undergraduate, I was a server. I worked at Vita, <laughs> and I was a server and a bartender. And I really feel like that job set me so up there to deal with there we go. people who are just upset or you know yeah. what, what have you. But like you said, our families, our children, they are the customers. We work for them. Like we're delivering a service, and so just even that mindset shift has you handling it with a little bit more grace mm -hmm. and and compassion behind it because it's not we have no job if they're not coming so right. sometimes it's like hold on now right. <laughs> we need them here you know <laughs> we need you here too Real but we need them here <laughs> yeah I like it I like it so the question, so there, the, let's say there's an educator that's watching this, they're like, well, she don't know the hardships I gotta go through. I deal with so many kids, so many kids within the period or whatnot, mm -hmm. and maybe I might, or, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I like to think for both aspects. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So when you said the educator, the educator was saying, like, I'm gonna have some off days or something like that. I would say we are going to, as human beings, be off. Mm -hmm. So we are going to communicate wrong or we mm -hmm. might be a little bit aggressive. But I think the main thing that I would say is always circle back to it. I mm -hmm. think there are so many times that adults don't admit that they were wrong. Yeah. Like you're allowed wow. to be wrong. Like teach teach children how mm -hmm. to react to a mistake. Um, help them deal with shame early. Help that inner voice early. So mm -hmm. while I do recognize that for some people in the trenches, it's hard. But mm -hmm. don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. Like if mm -hmm. you had a rough week, but did you ask for support? You know, you, wow. you're you having a hard time with a student. Did you invite their parent in? You know, you mm -hmm. like so there there are ways that you can own it. Um, but I would say, too, like, like I said, just make sure that you're not afraid to ask for help. Um, but be able to reflect, too. Like That's within good. the hardship, what role do you play? We always want to look at the system or the mm -hmm. principal or the kids. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's good. Right there. Mm -hmm. You just made me think about as a parent, because like I tell my kids in, in the hot second, like, hey, daddy messed up, okay? Yeah. Or or, or and, and it teaches you yeah. mentally, and it teaches you, you know, it, let your kids know that, that you're following. You're, you're not, you're, you're not that you're human. That you know? you're human, and it and really you apologizing and saying like. I was wrong. That sets a stage for when they make a mistake in the future for them to come to you and say like, Mom, I was wrong. Mom, I messed up. Because you've given them the language for that. Kids hide when they've never seen a mistake or when everybody, when adults seem so perfect, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to go against the grain. Show them that like mistakes are a part of it. You're going to get, you're going to fall down 
hundreds of times, oh, yeah. hundreds of times. But oh, yeah. what does get back up? What does it feel like? What does it look like? Oh, you know, mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I think they need to hear like, I was wrong. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. let me explain why that upset me the way it did. Like yeah. you know, just just give dialogue around. If you don't, you know, I'm not saying that families don't get to <laughs> get aggressive. Right. You know, uh, right. kids are going to take you there. But my piece of advice will always be always circle back to it in the same way that if you two got into an argument, you all would circle back to it before you moved forward. Yeah. Just because they're children doesn't mean that you can kind of bypass the big thing that happened. Right. Just as you would sit down and talk before you move forward, I think children deserve that as well. Definitely. I agree 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'm about to say, I'm about to say, you break it? We've been hitting all night, though. <laughs> No, I, that's awesome, right there. Yeah. Like I said, um, but I feel like, like, like you're like, what do they call it? Uh, counter culture when it comes down to typical, you know what I'm saying? Thought process when it comes down to how the school should be conducted. So shout out to you, by the way. Yeah, and I will say too, not everybody. Um, I, uh, I, I get some people who want to debate, and I welcome that. Mm -hmm. I think that um, as much as like my experience has brought me to this mindset, their experience has brought them to theirs. Yeah. Right. But I think you have to be willing to like seek people who are doing things differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are more than one way to be successful. Um, and I also think there's more than one way to have impact. And I'm trying to do less control and more influence. Um, I want kids to do the right thing because I showed them why it was important and not because mm -hmm. I said so. No, that's good. That, that's that. I mean, that was still real good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Facts, no. knowledge, so everything that you need to do. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's hard. You know, it gets hard. But like one thing I say often to my my kids, uh, my students is, you know, if, if let's say like I am in the heat of it, and I have yeah. somebody who is trying me, and I've tried all the things. Typically, I'll say, I'm going to go ahead and stop the conversation now because I don't want to disrespect you. And, mm -hmm. I, and I will name that because I want them to be able to walk away from conversations before they get disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to always defend yourself violating somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you can walk away and sometimes, like, let them have that. You don't always have to be heard. It's yeah. okay. You know? So, I try to teach that early. Like, it's okay. Sometimes, pause the conversation. Just mm -hmm. as, like, you do with the, with the romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. You get on fire and it's like, you know what? I'm going to just stop. Stop with the kids too, because mm. after a while they're not hearing you anyway, so it's almost like mm. <laughs> pointless, you know. That's a great life lesson, by the way. So you that teach, is. you give a life applicable lessons. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, no, it means I mean we all we know it's hard being a person of color. It's hard being black. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard sometimes, and they get a lot of darts thrown at them. And the least that I can do is make sure, obviously, you know how to read, but like you also know how to problem solve mm -hmm. and critically think mm -hmm. <laughs> and communicate. You know, right. so education has to be less about can you multiply and more like can you sustain when you've fallen down can yeah. you get back up mm -hmm. like you know can you ask for help you know yeah. just making sure we're raising and we're we're educating the whole child and not just educating them to be able to respond to a math problem because mm -hmm. there's more to life <laughs> you know, there's more to life I was going to say this time episode but I'm pretty sure you're going to pull a paragraph by now so I love how you <laughs> said that how to respond to more is it's just a math problem. That's that's a great title by the way too. But we're right title now. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. Okay, so we talk about the past, talk about the present, and we kinda of alluded to the future. Yes. Right? But what other future endeavors that you have, you know, you I mean you you wanna give give it all, but you know so what you got going, what you got going on in the future that we um, still got so for. I would say one thing that I'm pretty excited about, um that I'm doing next week. Um, I'm teaching two sessions at, um, I'm leading, I should say, two sessions at Columbia University um, oh. Teachers College. Oh. <laughs> so I'm excited, God is good, so I'm really excited for that. Um, I've been working on going from diverse classrooms to inclusive classrooms and mm. just um, really talking to like non-black teachers about how to just do better. Um, mm. And like people talk a lot about like, we want diversity, but like, What's diversity if you're gonna make them act like you? Like, yeah, put black people in the room, but uh -huh. not dress them like that. Like, wow. like, we want black people, but I need you to fit into this mold. Right. Like, we gotta do wow. a little bit better. Like, you know, wow. we, it, it's nothing to have them in a room if you're not gonna respect them. So yeah. anyways, that's what I'm talking about next week. So I'm pretty excited about that uh, with Columbia University. 
um, and um, some some other things in the works at, with that lane. Yeah. Um, but I will say too that the main thing right now for my business is me being comfortable getting uncomfortable. Like mm -hmm. I'm getting, Ooh, I've been getting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you gotta be able to get uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and um, you know I've been posting a lot more like video content and just mm -hmm. sharing my expertise sometimes. Because in the black community, you're, you're supposed to be humble. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to unlearn that. Um, and Kanye with it. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> unlearn that. Um, so yeah, so just um, just some things like that, some different workshops in the works, and then mm -hmm. um, some coaching obviously happening in the fall. Um, and the rest is just, you'll have to stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll stay speak it now. To see. I'm going to say that we'll see future TED Talks. You know what I'm saying? That, that is actually <laughs> so crazy that you say that because I used to always say, like, I want to do a TED Talk. No, I see, so I see, it. Look, I see. Look at that. Look at that. I so, see. That's prayerfully, but I'd rather. My main goal is to change some more schools. Mm -hmm. um, if TED Talk is like a part of the journey, fantastic. But mm -hmm. God willing, I can get to some more schools that are serving Black kids because, mm -hmm. um, like I said before, it's too many. It's too many of our our children who don't like school, mm -hmm. and I do think we can do something about that. Like um, we got to find what they like and then start teaching from there. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, just like I said, going in more spaces, having this conversation, being able to stand alone in it because. Um, it's fun here, but there are some educational spaces where I am a sit like I'm really the minority, not just like a mm -hmm. black woman, but I'm the mm -hmm. minority in my approach. I'm a minority in my mindset. Yeah. So, like I said, wow. just being able to stand tall in that, um, you know, is a part of the journey too. But yeah, I'm excited though. No, that's all. I'm something. excited. Wow. I like how you said that though. A minority. In my yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like this. Mm -hmm. Would you a giant? They all know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's no, that's good stuff you. right there. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, so I know you're from Cincinnati, but this question is still good because you're, you're you're you have dual citizenship. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so as everyone knows, I have several questions on the show. One question I like to ask: Because how long have you been in Cleveland? Um, this will be seven years. Seven years, perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have been a part of Cincinnati. Would you say because Cleveland, Cleveland stigma, Cleveland stigma of not collaborating, not coming together, which births podcast, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in your opinion, um. What do you think we can do to um, change that stigma? Mm, you know, I think one like what you're doing, um, creating space <laughs> for like yeah. more than one genius, more than one great, more than one Cleveland's best. Like you know what yeah. I mean? Like so, creating the space for it. Um, but I would say like having the conversations of like what are really we get to the root. Like what are we really afraid of? Why are we not mm. collaborating? Like, what's, what's really going on? Why are we not trusting? Like, I would say, I would ask them, like, have you collaborated with such and such? Oh, you know, why? Have you, mm -hmm. have you done any collaborations? Who do you have coming up next? Or just trying to start the conversation around it because I think, um, I, I feel like in all communities, we gotta get to like, why aren't we mm -hmm. collaborating? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I could go on a whole nother tangent, but I think capitalism <laughs> is really taught in schools to where it's all about you, you, you. Mm. Um, and when you live in a very capitalistic society, it's like, like it's all about, <laughs> yeah, it's all about you and what you yeah. can do for you. Um, and so we just have to, there's room for all of us. There's room for all of us. Yeah. And I think there's a, I mean, it's one thing to like, what can we do about it? I would say just really live it. And I think you guys really are living it, but like, you know, getting people on and sharing it because, yeah, I mean, even with me walking in and meeting, um, you know, the previous guest, um, um, yeah. just the community aspect, like, hey, how are you? Oh, welcome, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would say you guys are living it. We well, appreciate that. Yeah. We're trying Absolutely. to be like the TED Talk Cleveland. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, I like to think we have a we have a vast network at this point now. Like I like to think that if we if we need we need we I feel like we need to start doing matchmaking on the pull up. Uh, <laughs> we gonna start we gonna start pulling people to collaborate with each other and whatnot yeah. because we we have we we have literally had every person from every industry to where now I feel like you know what you short for this person or whatnot. Absolutely. So we're, Y'all be on the look out for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, like joint episodes, like having people together. Because even with the oh, guests. That is. Um, yeah, that is genius. Y'all heard that. We can jump the credit. You know what I'm saying? That, that is great. We're having a common discussion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like, or um, even too, like one thing that we can even do if we want to like 
work together after this of like let's get a panel together mm. let's, let's present questions let's get us all in this in the room um there are ways there are ways mm -hmm. um but with the guest previous um who went first um i know she was talking about workbooks I actually create workbooks for um in the educational space mm. and so even that conversation could have you know so i would say getting people together and yeah. then um doing some type of like panel or something would be really cool too so we do a panel so yeah. that's the first. <laughs> yeah. 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 no because yeah. I, I feel like uh there, well, no matter your industry, is something like that is universal. And stuff, mm -hmm. A lot of stuff you said tonight was universal, for not just in education, but overall. Absolutely. So that's dope. We'll call it something. Yeah. <laughs> TBU panels. Oh, yeah. yeah so <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out later. But I think that's a dope idea. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, and this is my favorite question, and I say it every single time because it really is. Because I like to believe, because when you're doing TED Talks, you you know what I'm saying, you're speaking at Harvard and all the other places and whatnot, you know, but look, look back at your episode, you know, yeah, yeah. and say so we had Jasmine on, remember when she was episode 138, you know? Yes. But um, the legacies you leave behind, uh, I really think that's very, uh, it's, re it's really why, I feel like the reason why we do anything, because either way, whether we like it or not, we're going to leave the legacy behind, whether we get or bad on us, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember watching the Nipsey Hussle episode, and I remember he uh, was talking about, unfortunately, he passed away, but... The things he said in every interview he did and went and exceeded those things. Right. What are the legacy that you want to leave behind for you and also your business? So I think that's a loaded question. It might it might change or grow. Of course, of um, course. But when I think about legacy, I think about my daughter. It's the first mm. person that comes to my mind. And if I'm thinking about a legacy I want to leave behind is that people know that they can be the start of change mm. and that um, be the be disciplined enough and have enough courage to like go out and and be that change so if, if, mm. if people don't remember me for anything else they know that i love kids and they know that i believe that i could change make change um mm. and i would just want that i would want my daughter to know that like if something doesn't feel right to you if you are sitting in your educational mm. classes like i was like hold on i don't see none of us in these books yeah. um know that you don't have to just sit in that like mm. um be willing to stand on your own um and, and be that change maker. So I want to leave a legacy for my daughter. No, that's a great. <laughs> and legacy. I want her to know that yeah, you you don't have to fit into the box. Mm. Yeah. Nope. All right. Yeah, that's, that's a great I one. Like that. And then um, I like to say all the time. I feel like the Mark of any great interview podcast, whatever it is you're looking at, people should have takeaways. Mm -hmm. uh, and you should know. You know, I appreciate that because you like as educated. Someone said these mm -hmm. takeaways, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you feel like? Cause you've been dropping bottles at the right. This thing has been heated up. This <laughs> thing is warm. Uh -huh. What are three things you want someone to wait tonight for your interview? Hmm. Um, you, drop, you, you know, you've been dropping them. The gym yeah, at the right. Yeah. Um, I would say number one, um, don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Mm, um, that's a great one. Number two, um, know there's power in investing in yourself mm. um, and being disciplined and um, finding mentorship. Um, and three, the last thing. Um, Pay attention to your children. True. Mm. 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 Pay attention to your, your the, if you don't have children, the children in your family, the children you are around. Mm. Um, listen, because <laughs> they have a lot to say, and there's a lot that we can do with their with mm. their voice and their influence. No, that's good. Because I think I, I remember as kids, we, we used to get dismissed all the time. Like that's just yeah. little, mm -hmm. a little song. So you know, we don't know. We don't know. know. We don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like said, yeah, listen, like to listen to them. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thank you both so much. Oh, no, we appreciate thank you. Thank you. And thank you me. for just opening our mind to really understand Absolutely. what's really going on and to really reach out to our youth, like you said. Yeah. Whether it's not your children, but, you know, those in your community, your church. Exactly. I know what's going on. Yeah. I love that you, you showed us that. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. So, okay, so it is the most important question. Where can the people reach you? Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm really active on Instagram. Um, as she mentioned earlier, my business is called The Urban EDU, and that is my handle, The Urban EDU, um, on Instagram. Um, as they said before, my name is Jasmine Williams. Um, I love being in the community. I love connecting, so definitely tap in. Um, right now I'm posting and going live pretty much daily at this point. Um, and so, like I said, I love perspective. I love input. So check me out on Instagram at The Urban EDU. And then, you, are you offering mentorship, coaching a little bit? Yeah, you know that will come in the fall. So, um, cool. if you are looking for more development around trauma, poverty, just education, mm. um, definitely check out because I have two coming this summer. 
Um, and then one-on-one -on -one instructional coaching is coming this fall for the That's upcoming 23-24 school year. And so I would love to support you or your building. Definitely let me know. All right, guys. So by the way, you're going to go look, looking for that. I'll have the show notes so y'all can hit Jasmine up, all right? Um, this has been great. Yeah, been so, great. so thank you for coming on. Thank you. Yes, and then part two, once you did the TED talk, we're gonna be right there. Yeah, I'm gonna y'all. I'm gonna Yes, yes. Right, right. No, that's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, thank you. No, we appreciate you. So, like you say, we got things to build, right? Guys, uh, July 15 to 16. I'm tired of talking about it, you know what I'm saying? Either you're going to get tickets or not. No, I'm, <laughs> um, I'm joking. But uh, July 15th or 16th, guys, two days. We're, we're educating you now, you know what I'm saying? We're showing you how to create your own podcast from conceptions to creating systems to uh, then actually putting money in your pocket. Uh, I don't know if you guys see my post, but YouTube has now made it so that the barrier for you guys to get monetized has been lowered so much. So we can now help you. Or we could have been helped you. But now, with the barrier being so low, now we can get you there a whole lot faster. So I uh, stop with uh, trying to think about, like I said, mentorship is where it's at. We're mentoring you, you know, um, and we're, we have done episode 138, 138 episodes, guys. We're going to help you get through the hurdles a lot faster. Yeah. So 25 hours for a ticket, I really honestly, for two days worth of training, that is actually, in my opinion, mm -hmm. a steal. Yeah. So uh, sure. we want to make sure that you guys get it uh, and get it at a reasonable price. And then on top of that, just like I said before, guys, back in the day, we had a website, what you need for business. As we all know, social media is what you need for business. But now, I honestly believe podcasting is the future for your business. Because not only are you able to create content for your for your social media, but you're also, how do you differentiate yourself from the next person in your field? Creating a podcast. Showcase. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know? <laughs> but that, that, that's real. You know? So, yeah. Whether if you flip a quarter every day or something like that, or if you're a person that... Uh, just like Jasmine, you know what I'm saying? You're an educator or whatnot. Yeah. You, there's, there's someone who, who needs what you have to give. Yeah. Your expertise. So please get the tickets. They're, they're going fast. Uh, lastly, guys, September 23rd, you guys are invited to cookout. Or not cookout. <laughs> We're invited to the festival. Uh, to you wine, she's having a fir first annual beer and wine festival uh, at Kane Park. It's going to be wine, drinks, uh, and music. So it's going to be a great time. If you're a vendor, in the area, if you want to become a vendor, please hit the link in the bio and um, please sign up. We're we'll, we'll gonna be there, it's gonna be a good time. Mm -hmm. Did I get everything out? I keep asking that, but I really do. I know, you got everything. I got you everything. Got you didn't. No, no, we wanna thank our great guest yes. tonight. Yes, awesome. thank you. Thank you again so much. No, thank you, thank you. We wanna thank you. Yeah. The person watching this one, first, first list to this, because once again, you are what makes this possible. You want to hear great stories like Jasmine's mm -hmm. and we learning, you're learning, and we're all learning together. So, mm -hmm. thank you, and uh, thank you guys for liking, sharing, subscribing. I think last time I checked, we were like 64, I'm sorry, 6,400 subscribers, oh. and it is y'all doing y'all thing. So I wanna thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, until next time, guys, uh, peace.